You ladies and gentlemen, students of Hillsdale, the friends of the college, I'm delighted to be here. First time, although I've been well acquainted for a long time with what Hillsdale means. You are men and women of Hillsdale, steeped in the best traditions of our great nation. If you don't lead by example, who will? The college was founded for four things. Freedom, faith, learning, and character. If you read the 1844 document in beautiful language, that's what it says. Your education in the liberal arts has empowered you to conserve the foundations of our freedom. And you are now uniquely suited, and I believe you are uniquely called to renew the fabric of our national life. It will require courage and tenacity and greatness of spirit. At times, you will face opposition. But as you've learned here at Hillsdale, strength rejoices in the challenge. The term education comes from a Latin term that means to lead forth, educare, and forth is the interesting part, right? Because you have to know which way is forth, and forth is a value term. Uh, there's back, and there's decline, and there's decay, or there's forth and rising. The source of the crisis in our country is in education. Some philosophers invented a new way of looking at the world. And in this new way, they thought, we are actually not a thing with a nature touched by the divine. Instead, what we are is a kind of evolving thing. And that turned education away from what it used to be, to be an exercise to try to control influences on us. Well, Thomas Jefferson writes, of the laws of nature and of nature's God, it is the way of things and knowing them and then being able to see your part in things. And that makes us responsible for ourselves in a bigger way. It takes energy to learn. It takes focus. You have to give yourself to it. My name is Josh, I'm from Pella, Iowa. I'm Ryan from Temecula, California. My name is Nathan, I'm from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. My name is Rita, and I am from Nairobi, Kenya. My name is Caleb, and I'm from Holland, Michigan. My name is Clara, and I'm from Cincinnati. I was always planning to go to music school. Coming to Hillsdale was kind of a big shift for me. I was recruited by a lot of Division II schools to go and play football. A lot of them felt the same, but when I stepped foot on Hillsdale, I just knew it was a, a different place. My sister and I were homeschooled. Some people always ask me, well, do you have friends? How did you socialize? When I first decided to come to Hillsdale, my parents and I had to make some hard choices. Leaving the country as a 20-year-old was a hard thing to do, and uh, I really respected my parents in letting me do this. And sorry, I'm kind of cheering up. When I made the decision to come to Hillsdale, I knew nothing about what the liberal arts were. It was hard for me to at first understand, how is this practical? How is this useful? Everything in life is intertwined, and that's what the liberal arts experience captures. Just the idea that it takes a lot more than one discipline to make you into a well-educated person. It doesn't just seek to develop skills in a specific area, but to develop the character of the individual and the ability to learn. What a human being has to do, strange as it sounds, a human being has to be taught to see the world. We don't actually see reality very clearly if we're just left to our own devices. We entertain all kinds of wishful thinking. A liberal education liberates people from all those constraints on their understanding reality. It's a time when college-age students are really making more choices probably than any other time in their life. We have to help them understand how to reach towards the good. Those are the kind of people that other people follow. Those are leaders. It's uh, very hard to take an 18-year-old and help them become an educated 21-year-old adult. It's a pain on everyone involved. <laughs> it's also great. And the point is you orient yourself around a combination of surveying the necessary things and digging deeply into the best things. You gotta read philosophy and rhetoric and logic and economics and politics and history and literature. And you gotta study math, chemistry, biology, and physics. And so that means that you're addressing yourselves to the great 
subjects that make up human knowledge. And there, that's, a, that's an achievement. To be a person when somebody says, what do you need to know? Wouldn't it be great to have an answer to that? And one can have an answer to that. Hillsdale College was founded on the frontier in 1844, and it was founded by a bunch of Free Will Baptist preachers who came out here on the frontier to start a college. They were very serious about high learning and about the perpetuation of freedom and very much founded the school from its beginning to admit people of any race, both sexes. So it was pretty radical. And uh, they rode their horse into town, various towns, and the one who came here is a man named Ransom Dunn who worked here for 50 years. Ransom Dunn rode into Hillsdale and he said, I'd like to meet with the citizens interested in education. And uh, so they met in the city hall, but it didn't have anything to do with government. Interesting point, to enter the college, you had to read Latin and Greek. And if you didn't read those things, they started a prep school where you could just learn those things, and then you could come to college. Why? They're gonna read the old books, the classic books, the first books written in the West of philosophy. And the, the Bible, the New Testament's in Greek. And so it's intellectually very ambitious. This is gonna be a serious college. This is gonna be a Christian college. This is gonna be a freedom college. This college is not gonna like slavery. So much so that during the Civil War, the college almost closed. So many students up and joined the army. The college you know, was kind of a ghost college for a while. You know, there were just very few students left. Of course, they realized that these students are just doing exactly what we believe is, is most important, and that is uh, defending the country, defending the unity of the country, and looking to end slavery, this, this terrible moral blot on the country. The college then, after the war, when most colleges and universities in the country were taken up in the sort of heady days of educational reform, Hillsdale never lost sight of its founding principles and thought, we don't actually have the liberty to cashier our principles and rewrite the nature and mission of the institution. And then, of course, in the 1950s, the federal government started funding higher education, and Hillsdale College was one of the very few perhaps eccentric institutions that said, nope, 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 we're not going to do it. Hillsdale College understands its independence is essentially preserved by not becoming a branch of the federal government. The biggest uh, detriment of not taking the money is one doesn't have the money. Uh, the biggest benefit is it reminds you what you're for. And uh, we focus on our mission around here. The people who support the college, just think about that, right? They don't get anything for it. They uh, support the college because they love the kind of thing it is. Hillsdale College was founded as a Christian college. It remains a Christian college, of course. There is some tendency to think that a Christian college means a college that has foreclosed important questions and is really a kind of indoctrination institution. Quite the reverse, it opens the education up to the ultimate point at which everything comes to be fully meaningful and integrated. You can't have a liberal arts education without God because you would have to do without the idea of the perfect. And sure enough, by logic, that would deprive you of understanding why anything is higher than anything else. And so come to find out the idea of God is the motive toward which all learning moves. Our uh, college motto is strength rejoices in the challenge. And what does that mean? It means it's a rigorous undertaking to try to know the best things and live according to them. Some people smile about our motto that strength rejoices in the challenge, but it's so true. Life is a challenge. And if they don't go through challenging times here, they're not gonna be prepared for life. The value that was instilled in me the most by my family was the hard work ethic. I grew up in a Christian family, strong in faith and strong as people. My parents instilled in me a very strong work ethic. Um, they taught me anything is possible if you're willing to go get it. Strength rejoices in the challenge is in many ways a battle cry for Hillsdale. There are a lot of times when the motto strength rejoices in the challenge confuses me because I'm definitely not feeling strong. <laughs> uh, freshman and sophomore year, maybe I did not rejoice in the challenge quite as much as I have the last couple of years. I'm feeling like there are three papers to do, several books to read, 
and I don't know how I'm going to get it all done. As someone preparing himself to be a Marine officer, this war cry of strength rejoices in the challenge is so important. The places that are the most uncomfortable are sometimes the best places to be because of how they challenge and grow you. There is just an accomplishment that you feel that you don't feel when things aren't as hard. Just coming from a place that trains you to embrace these challenges, it's a skill that you'll use every single day of your life. Whether it be in the academic circle where I didn't quite get the grade I wanted on a paper, or whether it be in sports where I thought I would come in and you know, be a starter one day, but I've seen myself more in a backup role. You can see those things as you know, failures, or you can see them as opportunities to get better. You're not gonna get strong in a day, but eventually, if you keep working at it, you're gonna reach your goal. It requires to embrace the challenges, to embrace the suck, as the Marine Corps would say. Hillsville College is a very demanding place. There are numerous amount of challenges that we face, and the hardest probably being the balancing of a lot of good things. Through that process, you fail a lot, but you learn through that failure. The purpose of strength rejoices in the challenge is to build you into a better person by the time you leave.